Once again in Beauty Times Medicine, we're joined by leading dermatologists and voices in skin science who are transforming how we think about beauty and about health, both in the clinic and in our everyday lives. Today, we're honored to welcome Dr. Christina Huyat, a renowned dermatologist from the Philippines with expertise in aesthetic and anti-aging medicine. Dr. Puyat has a remarkable biography. She's a founder of the Anti-Aging Sciences and Cosmetic Institute in Manila with a master's in preventive and regenerative medicine from Dresden in Germany, where she developed an interest in stem cell technologies. She trained in dermatology in the Philippines and in dermatological surgery in Houston in the U.S. Dr. Puyat, welcome to Beauty Times Medicine. It's an honor to have you here. Such an incredible background. Where did it all start? What drew you to dermatology? It started from a long time ago because um, I came from a family of like health professionals. So my father is a doctor. He's a gastroenterologist. My mom and my grandmother are both pharmacists. So being in the medical field, almost growing up, that made me, or I guess that inspired me or influenced me to go into medicine. My pre-med course is actually physical therapy. And in physical therapy, I saw a lot of skin conditions, you know, like non-healing wounds, yeah. scarring, oh, wow. contractures, mm -hmm. all those things. And even uh, sometimes uh, friction rubs and all, yeah. because uh, they're usually with braces and all. So uh, that gave me an, um, you know, an interest in the dermatology part. And um, one thing that you're pretty well known for is, of course, you're a fantastic injector, you know aesthetic treatments really well, but people also say you take a bit of a holistic approach. You don't just talk about the actual treatment. You talk about health, you talk about other things that yes. your patients can do. How did you come to that point, so to speak? Okay, I came to that point, um, well, it's a sad story, but my father had non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And there was a time that he was telling me, enough, my doctor said enough. And I'm like, what? What do you mean enough? Who's your doctor? And he points up. So at that point, I knew that, you know, we had to go into something different. And that's when we started more of alternative medicine because he's undergone chemo, electron beam radiation, all of the scientific things. And he said, enough, right? Yeah. So we went into holistic treatments and all. And when we did that, okay, I found out that he had better quality of life. He was able to go out and visit my siblings in the U.S. And then, although he still died, but, you know, at least he was able to do what he wanted to do in his last minute of, you know, life. So when you talk to your patients about kind of a holistic approach, other things they can do, um, I've heard you talk about nutrition, even uh, hormone replacement therapy after menopause. So when you talk to them about that, do you actually see that their skin looks better, that it impacts their skin health? Oh, yes. Because um, us, when we were younger, especially me as female, we know that we are at peak because we have our menstrual cycle and estrogen and progesterone plays a peak in that. But when we reach menopause, all of a sudden we don't have our period, right? And when you look at it, it is at our peak that we look the best. We look the youngest. I mean, the same goes with guys. You know, you have andropause. And um, when you were at your peak, you had a lot of testosterone in you. So just by supplementing the hormones will actually make the skin look younger. Actually, I'm on it. So you can see I have younger looking skin. So in addition to being on uh, hormone replacement yes. therapy, is there also vitamins, is that also something that you recommend or yes. how does that work out? Yeah, um, actually we have a lot of things that we need to take care of. Like um, usually when my patients come to me and they want the holistic approach, I start off with a hormone panel and the same time a baseline of your blood exam. And if they're really serious about it, then I do a genetic testing. So with that genetic testing, it will say your nutritional status, your telomere status, and even what kind of exercise is needed for you. And based on those data that I've gathered, I will now make an individualized treatment plan 
for the patient. I would imagine in the U.S. and in Germany, it's a bit more about the aging population. It's more about countering the signs of age. In the Philippines, it's a somewhat younger uh, population. So what's the differences between treating someone in the U.S. or taking care of someone aesthetically uh, in the Philippines? In the Philippines, we're made up of about 130 million, and 30 million of that is in the metropolis. And when you look at that, okay, I only stay in the uh, metropolis, so I can only speak about that area. So I have a lot of patients that are younger and on the opposite spectrum, the older ones. Maybe because they know my practice, I have the older patients who are healthy and they want to look better, so they come to me. And the other spectrum, which is more than the older ones, okay, are the young ones who are a little bit on the spoiled side now. And um, they want to look good. They belong more to the proactive trend. So they don't want to look old and they're very conscious about their health. People also associate you with being courageous. I think you are one of the very few I've ever seen that shows pictures of the evolution of your, the face of your husband because you've been treating him. I heard he was not so happy with the lips. Are you now yeah. happy with the lips or that went oh, away? Yeah. Actually, at the start, he was like really getting mad at me, like, why should you do it, this and that? And I told him, it's okay. So after a week, when he saw that it settled down, the inflammation settled down, he said, oh yeah, you're right. And it doesn't make you nervous to treat your own husband or? No, actually he's my favorite subject because okay. he can't complain. That's why you have. <laughs> <laughs> and what about, I think you're also very honest yourself. You also, I've seen you tell, I've also had treatments yes. um, yourself. Do, do your patients say, what kind of treatments do you recommend that? Have you had some of them yourself? Do they ask about that or? Actually, what made me treat myself, I usually treat myself. I do the injectables. Ah, you don't have someone. You do it yourself. Yes. Wow. I know my face the best. Okay. And when someone does it, I usually get into trouble. <laughs> okay. So you do it yourself. Yeah. So um, I started doing myself when a patient of mine told me, you, you know, she was a little bit on the middle age um, type. And she goes, doctor, how come, you know, you're treating me, but you have those lines and all. I go, I do? And they're like, yeah, look at that. I go, okay, I'm going to fix it. So the next time you come, it will be okay. So then I realized that, you know, um, looking the part of it as a doctor is also important. So your patient knows that uh, you're capable of doing it. Because I think if you don't dress the part or if you don't look it, then there might be a little bit of hesitation in the patient. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I think your openness, I've seen that many times on, <laughs> on stage, must also be inspiring to all the other physicians. So one thing I read in your resume is you've been very interested, uh, both research-wise and education-wise, in stem cells. So, of course, skin rejuvenation, skin repair, maybe even hair regrowth. Is that an area of interest to you? And how do you see um, stem cell playing a role in aesthetic medicine? Yeah, when I went to Dresden, my thesis was about stem cells. So um, when I did that, I had a lot of studies, um, meaning I took uh, stem cells from the bone marrow and also from the fat, and I've done it to patients to uh, produce rejuvenation. So what I found out there was that there was really rejuvenation of the face because um, actually I'm, I'm also a victim of that because I wanted to try, so... I put some stem cells on me, and for some reason, I don't think I look 62 at this point. So maybe it has... Absolutely a... <laughs> not, I say so. I think um, the stem cells also has a good bearing in that. So usually when there's new products, I tend to try it because I want to see how it feels, and I want to experience it so that it will be easier for me to communicate with the patient what they're going to expect and how, you know, I can improve their faces or so their aesthetics. You're really at the forefront of uh, aesthetic medicine. So if you had to look a bit into the future, what, what do you think the future holds for aesthetic medicine? Okay, I think for aesthetic medicine, it will be more of the natural looking beauty. It will be more of the non-invasive cosmetic procedures. But not only that, it will be holistic in terms that, you know, uh, they have to incorporate lifestyle, wellness, and all those things so that it can also actually achieve a younger looking skin. So it's not just going to be in one facet, but it will be multifaceted to produce the effect that you want. Dr. Puyat, thank you so much for being on the show today. I think the insight into the future about the Philippines, really fascinating. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and I also thank you, and I'm honored to be here. 
Thank you for being part of Beauty Times Medicine. We hope you found this episode interesting and we look forward to sharing more expert knowledge and more insights from the forefront of dermatology in the next episode.